Hi, everyone. My name is Claire Morneau. I am the communications manager at CISA, which is Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture. And I am here today with Liz Latoile and Chris Sellers, uh, who are representing the brand new brewery at Four Star Farms in Northfield, Massachusetts. We're going to talk a little bit about this new venture and um, this new beer. So thanks for joining me. Nice to see you both. Nice um, to see Thanks so, yeah, Liz is the director of sales and marketing, and Chris is the head brewer and general manager. So we have all of the pieces covered. Um, and Liz, I want to start with you. If you could tell us a little bit um, just about the history of Four Star Farms and how it is that you decided to launch this new business with Chris. Sure. So I'll be speaking like this has been my thing all along, um, but I will add the caveat that I, I married into a farming family. Um, about almost 11 years ago. And uh, basically Four Star Farms um, has been in the Latoile family since the late 1980s. It started off as a monocrop farm, um, growing grass for the landscaping industry, the housing industry, and that sort of uh, market. And it was a wonderful business that supported one family very, very well. And as time went on, um, as things do, you have to find ways to, became, um, to stay more relevant and sustainable in the markets that surround you. And so around 2008, um, when the family went from one family of a mom and dad and two sons to a mom and dad and two sons with spouses and children, we were looking for creative ways to really take advantage of the land that we have here. So we have about 250 continuous acres of farmland in Northfield on some of the best soil in the world. And so we were trying to look at things that we could do that would be different in the agricultural economy that we, that we live in. There's a lot of farms in the valley. And so looking at crops that didn't require a lot of manual labor, um, None of us were particularly interested in managing large crews of people. Um, getting work done is more our specialty. Management is another level um, that takes a, a, a lot of time and effort. So in about 2008, we started looking at diversification plans and that turned into us growing grains, which are a type of grass. So thankfully we had the, the knowledge to, to try to do that also a historic crop that was grown throughout New England um, through the late 1800s or so. And that was my mother-in-law's idea. She was a, a food scientist um, for many years, uh, has her master's degree in that. And my father-in-law at the time said, well, if we're gonna be growing grains, hops would be a great next addition because then we can make beer, knowing full well that we never wanted to make beer. <laughs> So I feel like this is the beginning of so many stories that <laughs> end with doing exactly that. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, both of those crops were things that had been historically grown in this region, but that all of the infrastructure, all of the institutional knowledge had left this area. So it was a lot of trial and error on our parts as farmers. Thankfully, my father-in-law, Gene, I'm pretty confident he could grow anything. Um, and so in 2008, we started these diverging paths of growing grains that we would mill into flour, growing hops for the local beer industry, and still continuing to grow grass that the farm was started on. And, you know, fast forward to 2020, there were lots of changes that started happening all over the world for, you know, COVID reasons. But our farm had also decided to start making some transitions we're all getting a little bit older. We're all realizing that time is important. And we were recognizing that we were growing three crops that all kind of begged for our attention at the same time. And so we made the choice to kind of narrow our focus down to what we thought we could manage best. And that meant um, letting go of the hops, uh, not the hops, sorry, the turf and letting go of the, the grain side so that we could focus in on the hops, which seemed to be the most promising from our perspective. That's great, yeah. What a um, story of constant innovation and adaptation, which is sort of 
I don't know, perhaps one of the themes of this year too. Absolutely. Um, Chris, would you talk a little bit about your background and how you came to this? Sure. The, um, so uh, for the last 13 years, I've been the brewery manager at the People's Pint down in Greenfield. And, um, you know, it's the, that working there really was a, uh, an eye-opening, you know, entry into what it means to really get involved in local agriculture, to engage a small business in the agricultural community you know, uh, around you. And um, back in 2008 or 2009, Liz, you'll have to correct me if I get the year wrong, but I remember uh, Gene showed up one day and he said, hey, I've got this big trash bag of hops in my truck and uh, you can make beer out of this, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I can probably do something with it. Um, and uh, Four Star was really one of the first small farms to even try growing local hops. Um, and, you know, the, the hop market at that time around 2007, 2008, um, there was a real over demand and under supply and um, their timing couldn't have been better for a lot of reasons. Um, as they found out down the road, the, the tricky part is really the processing and the packaging uh, for brewers. But um, one of the astounding things was that every time we use their hops, they'd come and say, hey, how'd it go? What can we do differently, better? Um, how can we improve on our process or packaging or growing good? Give us feedback. And then sure enough, the next year, you know, pretty much every single thing that every brewer told them would, would be, would come true. It was, it was pretty rare to, you know, give all that feedback and, and suddenly find it um, coming to be. So um, from then on, probably 2009, all the way through uh, 2000, early 2020, um, I worked with Four Star Hops every year, you know, and, and more and more quantity, more and more different application in beers. Um, and so uh, a couple of years ago, when we started the kind of existential conversation about, you know, what if there was a brewery on this farm? What if? <laughs> You know, it's it's difficult as a brewer to you know contain your excitement when you have um, the opportunity to to be able to draw your ingredients from within a, a football field away of your brew house. Um, so as we progress with our planning um, in uh, 2017, um, the Lay Twal family was gracious enough to let my wife and I get married here on the farm. Uh, of course, the entire Lay Twal clan um, was in attendance to enjoy. <laughs> so you could argue it was the, the most complex job interview you could ever have. <laughs> my extended family and my wife's extended family vetted for, you know, <laughs> participating. But, um, you know, I've used both uh, lots of varieties of the Four Star Farms hops and the grains. So I, f I felt like, you know, I had a firm understanding of how these ingredients would work together. And, you know, the concept of local in beer is a complicated definition. Um, I think there are a lot of breweries that are just so excited to use local, even in a small quantity. Um, they put that kind of weighty word on it. And then there are breweries that are using everything local and, and everything in between. So um, what a great opportunity as a brewer to be able to say, you know, here's where you're drinking the beer, there's where the ingredients were grown and here's where the beer was brewed and now you're having it right next to all of that. So um, what an opportunity to kind of close that distance as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. We're under no delusion that it, every, we, we, we certainly can't support all of our ingredients being from right here on the farm, but um, we're happy that one of our first beers we came out with last week is actually, other than the yeast, everything comes from right here. Um, so to have that opportunity to be able to share that story um, with our customers has been really professionally exciting for me and something that I can be super proud of as a brewer and, and uh, an owner of this business. Yeah, yeah, I love to hear that. Um, Liz, can you tell us like, where are you at right now? What's, what's going on with the brewery? Are you, you're open for business? What's the, how can people find you and find your beer? Sure. So we opened for business on December 19th. Uh, we're currently open Wednesday through Sunday for to-go only beers. Um, basically with the restrictions that um, were recently heightened, we decided it was in our customer's best interest and in our best interest to really open up in a way that felt safe and comfortable for everyone. What that also meant was a huge risk for us um, trying to sell beer that no one could taste before they bought and only offering it in four packs. 
Um, but what that has done is actually worked really well to gain community support. Um, a lot of neighbors that, that come by on a regular basis um, to buy their four packs to go. And I'm assuming that the beer must be pretty tasty if people are coming multiple times to keep coming and buy more. So um, this was not necessarily the way that we had planned on opening and we're slowly figuring out our plans as we march closer to spring and warmer weather on how we can integrate more activity here in the tap room and as well as on the, the property itself at the brewery to have customers come and drink beer here in the atmosphere that um, this is the place where all of the things they're drinking are green. Yeah, and um, obviously you're really at the sort of beginning stages of this, but COVID aside, what's the vision for um, how this business is gonna fit into our larger beer system. I don't know if that's a term, but <laughs> what do you, what do you sort of hope for um, when we're through this crisis period? Um, we're hopeful for all the things, if that makes sense. Um, we, we really want this to be a community space um, where people feel comfortable, where they can come and get whatever level of engagement and education that they want to get from our farm. If someone wants to come and just sit in the tap room and enjoy a beer, great. If someone wants to come and participate in, you know, an educational opportunity that Chris or one of the farmers is offering on, you know, this is how we gather our yeast and how we'll turn it into a house yeast or, you know, go on a tour of the hop yards while they're drinking a beer that's made from the variety that they're walking down the rows. Um, just trying to make it as much of an immersive community-based spirit as people want to participate in. Yeah, that sounds so dreamy given our current circumstance. I can't yeah. wait for that to happen. Such a luxury. Yeah. Um, Chris, I'm aware that this is a dangerous question to ask a brewer um, given time limitations on all of our days, um, but tell us a little bit about the beer. Well, the uh, right now we have five different styles available. Um, everything from a New England IPA with all the, the hazy, juicy goodness that you expect to um, our sort of Franco-Belgian Saison, which is uh, really showcases barley grown here, uh, rye grown here, wheat grown here, as well as hops grown here. Um, you know, but I, I think in a lot of ways, the exciting part is taking some styles and creating them using the ingredients grown here and, and you know, kind of showing brewers that you can do these things with ingredients that are that are grown right here. Um, and, and I think uh, to be able to explore the, the parameters of that as, as far as that'll take me um, is certainly in the future. But for right now, you know, we, we really debated a lot. What, what do we want to open with? What do we want to have? You know, there are a lot of breweries that open and say, here's six IPAs or here's three pastry stouts and two IPAs. You know, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of breweries that open up with one particular goal in mind and what we realized is that one of our core purposes here is to be a part of this community and, and to create something that people will want to participate in and, and create a product that people will want to buy and not just one specific group of beer drinkers but a wide variety of people um, so to offer everything from you know the the hazy ipa to say a, a british session style beer um, for me, both allows us to showcase the characteristics of the ingredients we're growing here, but also to reach a wider audience of customers. And I think the exciting part is in the last three weeks, we've actually been open. Um, first, we've people actually came and bought the beer with money. So that's like really exciting. <laughs> yeah, <for> um, <laughs> but, but, you know, we, we really like haven't thought too hard about it. But at the same time, if you really like step back from the whole thing, you're trying to, you know, you're selling people beer they can't taste before they buy it from a new brewery that has no existing reputation. And so, you know, that to me is really encouraging from a community engagement point of view that not only have we seen a ton of customers from right here in Northfield stop by, but we've seen people from all over the Valley and, you know, from far and wide brewers we know, um, people from as far south as Connecticut, further points east and west. So, you know, to me that people will drive to a brewery to see the space 
buy the beer, taste untasted and, you know, and then say, I can't wait to come back to drink beer, you know, here when you can pour it for me is really feels great as a brewer to, to think about that. Um, so we, we've had a great time telling our story, showing off um, this building that we spent so much time and energy um, putting together and, and creating that experience. So I think in terms of the beers, to bring it all the way back to your original question, not get too tangential with this. Oh, um, I think it's a huge opportunity um, and, and to really stretch our legs, do some interesting things. Um, you know, we are planning on doing some wild yeast harvesting in the next couple of months as temperatures get sustained cold enough to do that. Um, and to, you know, explore some of those opportunities and some of those possibilities, I think it'll create such a unique and wide variety of products that we'll be able to be a new and different member to our, our kind of Franklin County craft beer community and our certainly our Pioneer Valley craft beer community. Yeah. Well, I have to say, both of you, your excitement about this is really palpable and really infectious. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get up there myself. Liz, do you want to show us the space as a little bit of a teaser for um, sure. our the days? <laughs> Sure, I'm gonna do it um, the low tech way. Yeah. Um, and just a, a quick spin around the tap room. Um, so basically, and I'm gonna to try to also monitor my camera as best I can while I do this. <laughs> so we'll take a little spin around. We're currently in our tap room, as I mentioned. Um, where basically the whole goal of this space was to build a building that if you're not too into the outdoors, you can enjoy the building. But also if you're really into the outdoors, you have spaces like this, which might not be easy to see, but you're looking out at a row of pine trees that separate the brewery from one of our hop yards. And so it, it's a beautiful space made with wood that we gathered here from the farm. Um, lots of live edge countertops and things like that. And then also giving a bird's eye view into the brew house. So if Chris happens to be making cool. it while we're open, um, folks can take a peek and watch that process um, while also looking right back at um, one of the hop yards through those glaring windows behind me. So just kind of the, the full immersive experience. So you're here at the farm, there's beautiful lawns surrounding the tap room. There's these hop yards that in any season kind of give you something beautiful to look at, whether it's the starkness of winter or come July, you know, these, these really tall behemoth plants that yeah. um, create an own, their own microclimate and unique environment. Yeah, most people have probably not seen hops grow, but they grow to be how tall? So they grow to be about 19 feet tall um, and it's kind of remarkable. So one of the things that some of our customers are looking forward to is the step-by-step -step progression. Yeah. So they start growing in April. By the summer solstice, they've grown from the ground to the 19 feet of the trellis. So some weeks that means they're growing up to three feet. And so it feels like you, you can literally watch them growing while you're sitting there looking at them. Kind of weird, but yeah. also kind of cool. Yeah, that's so neat. Um, all right, well, I wanna ask you both just, I feel like we've covered so much about what is great and exciting about this, but I wanna ask you both just like, what are you most excited about being able to do with this new business, with this new space? Like what's the, the one thing that you kind of wanna pass along to people that you're excited about? Liz, do you wanna go first? I'm um, sure. I think, um... The biggest thing that I'm excited about is to give people a chance to really see our farm. Now, the brewery is not the farm. The brewery is here on the farm. But um, for so many years, we were a wholesale business that really didn't have the opportunity to create um, events for people to come and see what we were doing, except for once, once in a while, once in a great while. And this space gives people the opportunity to come and ask questions because inevitably one of us farmers is going to be working in the tap room. And so, hey, what are those things growing across the street there? Um, and really give people a chance to experience agriculture from start to finish. So you see the hops growing in the field, you see the grains growing in the field, and then you can actually learn what they taste like in the beers that Chris makes. Yeah. 
Chris, how about you? Yeah, you know, it, there's there's so much opportunity when it comes to this kind of new project and perspective on on brewing. Um, but the other fun sort of side feature of this brewery is we also have a winery license. Um, so we've had, uh, you know, I think a lot of people think tap room, okay, well, I'm going to go with five friends and one of them is always inevitably not going to like beer. Um, that's just how the, the, the drinking world works, right? <laughs> but uh, we've partnered with our friends at uh, Blackbird, who have just been an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, and they've contract produced a white wine and a red wine for us. Um, so we'll have that as available, uh, available as well. And uh, we're also um, uh, producing our own hard cider. So, um, you know, in, in addition to all of this exciting opportunity with the ingredients grown right here on the farm, we're able to create these relationships with, um, you know, like Pete Mitchell up at Headwater Cider and um, Simon up at Scott Farm in Dummerson, Vermont, um, to, to work with them on some other agricultural products that we can, you know, create some more creative opportunity and uh, provide a, a product that might not be beer, but, you know, is still sourced from right here um, for our customers. But really at the end of the day, the, the opportunity is, is so vast when it comes to new and interesting projects. And I look forward to really working with all of my neighboring brewers and, and continuing to, to be a strong part of this beer community right here, uh, both in Franklin County and in, in the Valley as a whole and the state. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Liz, do you want to give the quick, how can people find you synopsis before we sign off? Sure. So the best way to find us is at fourstarbeer.com. That's F-O-U-R-S-T-A-R-B-E-E-R.com. Um, or on all of the socials, um, it's at fourstarbeer spelled the same way, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, um, we're, we do Twitter a little bit. Um, and also, if you're old school, you can call 413-225-3187. And where is the brewery located? So it is located at 508 Pine Meadow Road in Northfield, Massachusetts. Um, it gets a little confusing because we're literally right near the entrance of the farm, but we have our own separate entrance um, at a sign with our logo and name on it. So you can't miss it. Great. All right, well, thanks so much to both of you for your time and um, I'm really excited to hear about all the work you're doing. It's pretty great. Thanks so much, Claire. Okay.